welcome to the Mint Report, a wrap-up of the day's business news. Here are the top stories. Supreme Court orders Karnataka ban on iron ore exports to be lifted. SEBI approves Vedanta's open offer for Kane India. And Anil Ambani appears before the PAC. A new Supreme Court decision has provided relief for some of India's mining companies. On Tuesday, the court ordered that Karnataka's ban on iron ore exports be removed. It has given a deadline of the 20th of April for the ban to come to an end. Karnataka prohibited iron ore exports in July of last year. Its move reduced India's exports of the material by a fifth. Not surprisingly, stocks of one of India's major iron ore exporter, Sesa Goa, shot up 6.5% on the BSE on a day the overall index fell. Staying with natural resources, the Vedanta Kane India deal is now a step closer to becoming reality. On Tuesday, Market regulator SEBI gave Vedanta the go-ahead to make an open offer for 20% of Kane India. SEBI's approval came seven months after Vedanta stuck the deal with Kane India's parent unit. The crucial next step is a green light from the government itself. Kane India CEO Bill Gamel and Anil Agarwal of Vedanta have set a deadline of the 15th of April for finalising the deal. Incidentally, Vedanta will make the open offer through its group company, which is none other than Sesa Goa. Meanwhile, stocks of Kane India fell 0.6% on the BSE by the end of Tuesday's trade. And moving on to other news, Anil Ambani has appeared before the parliamentary panel looking into the 2G scandal. On Tuesday, he testified before the Public Accounts Committee, which is headed by BJP's Murli Manohar Joshi. Just days earlier, the CBI had accused officials from Ambani's group companies of setting up Swan Telecom. The agency claimed Swan was set up as a front so Ambani's firms would get more telecom spectrum. On Monday, the Public Accounts Committee had questioned Ratan Tata and corporate lobbies Neera Radia. And brace yourself for more price rises. RBI Deputy Governor Subir Gokan has said high inflation, once considered unacceptable, has become the new norm. He added that the Reserve Bank could not afford to be slack in combating rising prices. RBI has already increased policy rates eight times since March of 2010. But wholesale inflation in February was still at 8.31%, much higher than RBI's March end target of 8%. And finally, Indian markets saw a choppy day of trade on Tuesday, with stocks fluctuating throughout. The Sensex ended 15 points lower at 19,687, but the Nifty gained marginally to wind up at 5,910. And that's all we have for you. Thanks for watching.